fixed mindset and the growth mindset. And there are two characteristics that really influence each of these mindsets. Okay, so it's, it's beliefs and focus. So in the fixed mindset, they believe that skills are born and you can't learn and grow from it. And the focus of the fixed mindset is on performance outcomes. So am I winning or am I losing? And one of the main primary concerns in people in this mindset is doing their best to not look bad. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily matter if they're being successful or if they're exerting effort or anything like this. It's just, I need to do whatever I need to do in order to not look bad. Okay, so again, in sharp contrast, in the growth mindset, um, the belief is that skills are built and that you can learn and grow. And they're most concerned about um, how they I'm sorry. And so that the focus is really more about the process and getting better. So this idea of am I better today than I was yesterday? OK, so a sharp contrast to I just don't want to look bad. OK, so these characteristics and these mindsets have a huge influence on our ability to learn and get better. And so one way to think about what it takes to get better are by kind of four key ingredients. Okay, so our, kind of the keys to improvement are these four key ingredients. So effort, challenges, mistakes, and feedback. So let's start talking about the fixed mindset, okay? So when someone is in the fixed mindset, they look at effort as a really negative thing, okay? It is something that you do when you aren't good enough. They also don't see the value or purpose of putting in effort. They've been shown to back down and avoid challenging situations and frame them as a threat. They get really discouraged and worked up when they make mistakes or fail. And when someone receives feedback in this mindset from a coach or anybody else, they get really defensive, take it personally, and don't see the value or purpose of this feedback. So in other words, they really shy away from these four key things that would help them learn and grow because it would make them look bad, okay? So flipping the script again, a person in the growth mindset looks as effort as a really useful thing. It is a necessary ingredient and part of the learning process. They're more likely to embrace challenges and persevere through them. Um, they view them more as an opportunity, again, an opportunity to get better. They see mistakes as learning opportunities, and when they receive feedback, they appreciate it and use it. Sometimes it can be hard, um, but I think ultimately they definitely appreciate it. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna combine all of these. So I'm gonna show you how the characteristics influence these keys to, um, these keys to improvement. Okay, so a person in the fixed mindset will shy away from putting in effort because they don't believe that they can change. Okay, so why put in the effort if I can't get better? They're more than likely going to give up when met with a challenge and when things get hard because they don't want to look bad. They hate making mistakes and failing and are discouraged by them because if you're making mistakes, then you're not looking good. They also don't see the value or purpose and feedback because they don't believe in their capacity to learn and grow. Okay, again, all of these actions are a byproduct of beliefs and focus. Okay, this entire mindset is shaped by this individual's beliefs and focus. So now what I wanna do is I wanna flip the script and I wanna show how different this is in the growth mindset, okay? So a person in the growth mindset will see the value and the purpose of effort because they believe in their opacity, capacity to learn and grow. They're more than likely going to take on a challenge and persevere through it because they believe that they can grow and they're focused on the opportunity to get better. They also understand how important mistakes are in the process of getting better. And when they receive feedback, they're more receptive because they believe that information can help you get better, okay? Two very different mindsets, two completely different outcomes to getting better and being able to, I think, really fulfill that individual's potential. I think the first step in responding as opposed to emotionally you know, reacting to failure and, and to be better at failure is to be aware of your mindset. 
You know, are you more fixed in the fixed mindset or are you more in the growth mindset? And what I'll say also with this is that we are all a combination of fixed and growth. And so I think that the first part of this is to identify, you know, do I think I can get better through improvement, through being challenged, through making mistakes, through getting feedback? Or, you know, is it something that, you know, I, I have what I have and I can't get better, that fixed mindset. So the first part is be aware of your mindset and where are you at? Because it's possible to shift from a fixed to a growth mindset. OK, so I think one of the ways to do that is to manage your thoughts. OK, so research has said that we as human beings think up to 60,000 thoughts every single day, which is a lot. And, and what they mean by thoughts is just anything that kind of floats through your head. So let's say that you get a really good night's sleep and you sleep for eight hours. So that means that out of the 24 hours, you're up for 16 of those. So dividing this by the 16 hours that you are actually awake, that means that you can think up to 3,750 thoughts every single hour. Bringing that into the context of a, a, a practice or a competition, that means that you can think up to 7,500 thoughts during that. Now, my point in saying this is that if you can be aware of your thoughts, because I know for me, sometimes I'm not even aware of, of what I'm thinking. If you can be aware of what your thoughts are, and if your thoughts aren't helping your performance, tweak them so that they are more helpful, that is going to have a very, very powerful impact and influence on performance. And again, in this idea of, of trying to, to switch from a fixed to a growth mindset, if you can identify that you're in a fixed mindset and shift even like a quarter of them to a more growth mindset um, and to be more helpful to your performance, you're gonna see a drastic payoff in, in performance, okay? So um, kind of psychology 101 and kind of where I'm going with this. Okay, so there is a stage of process that happens um, starting with um, some type of event that happens all the way to how that ultimately affects your behavior and your performance on the court. Okay, so let's say that um, I am an outside hitter. Okay, we are in a competition and the set is off the net and I go to attack the ball and I hit it into the net. Okay, so that's the event that happens. After that event happens, the thought that goes through my head is, oh, geez, I'm terrible and I suck. Okay. The feeling that I have as a result of that is, you know, you know, sadness, maybe a little bit of feelings of depression or shame um, because I wasn't successful. Um, and, you know, maybe even shame because my parents are spending so much money to give me all these opportunities and I'm even letting them down. As a result of that, my behavior is maybe the next set to me, I'm really shaky regardless of where it is along the net. Um, and I'm afraid to make a mistake. So I'm just generally not as aggressive and just happy to get the ball over the net and in play. You know, just as long as I don't mess up, that's good. Um, so my performance totally suffers from where I was previously at. So now what I want to do is I want to take this exact same situation, but I'm going to change the thought. OK, so I'm an outside hitter. The set's off the net and I hit the ball off the net. But this time my thought is, well, it's all the setter's fault. Can't she just get me a good set? My feeling, you know, I'm probably pretty frustrated and angry at my setter and the behavior. You know, I may give the setter a look, um, which I make sure that the setter sees and I grumble under my breath just loud enough for the setter to hear my comment. Um, and so my performance may not change, but I may not get a set the next go around or it may not be as good of a set as the setter could potentially do because I've kind of messed with the setter. OK, exact same situation. But as a result of the thought that goes through my head, it drastically changes my behavior and ultimately my performance. So now I want to give you a third scenario. OK, so exact same situation. I'm an outside hitter, sets off the net and I hit the ball into the net. But this time my thought is, whoops, I didn't play the ball that well. Next time I'm going to make sure that I adjust my approach and make contact with the middle of the ball rather than the top of it. This time my feeling, I may be temporarily frustrated, totally possible, but I quickly move on from the stake and I'm refocused and ready for the serve that's about to come over the net. And so my performance is going to improve. Okay, again, same situation, exact same event that occurs on all three. If I can change my thought, I can change my performance. 
Okay, so that's what I'm saying. If you can manage your thoughts, it's okay if you start to say, I'm terrible, I suck. But if you can quickly tweak that and nip it in the bud, you're ultimately gonna be more successful in the long run.